Hey everyone, I'm starting a new video series about the video game module for Flipper Zero. Please subscribe to the channel and click the bell to get notified of future Flipper Zero videos. Also, join my Discord server for Flipper related giveaways and discussions. In this first video, we're doing an overview of the video game module. In future videos, we'll dive into the technical details. We'll learn how to create firmware, we'll learn how to create custom games such as this maze game, and we'll learn how to unlock additional sensor data. Let's get started. The video game module is on sale at the official Flipper website for 49 US dollars. It first went on sale February 13th, 2024, and I received mine a week later. The blog entry that introduces the video game module is a good starting point. It has links to the getting started guide, the documentation, and all the demo apps. All right, so this is the video game module. It has a little pamphlet with the directions, and then it has the module itself. Uh, there's a little peel here, so you can take off that sticker, and that'll give you access to the GPIO pins. Um, if you want, you can also remove the silicone. But if you don't have the case, then you should put this back. And it fits really nicely in there. I've connected my HDMI cable to the video game module. And now when we plug it in, we see the video game module not initialized. And our status light is blinking blue. Open up QFlipper and install the latest release build. Unleashed, Extreme, and Rogue Master have all added support recently for the video game module. But if you have the wrong version of FAP files installed, it'll hang when it tries to run the video game engine. So just make sure the application on your flipper matches the firmware you're running. So everything should be fine. Once we've installed the new firmware, we should be able to connect the video game module. And there it is, video game module initialized. On labflippernet.apps, if you click on tools and get not compatible with your firmware, make sure you've installed the release version and not a dev version of the firmware. If you're running official release, the tools button should work. You can click over on video game module tool and say install. Lab.flipper.net requires Chrome or Edge to be able to communicate with your flipper, and your flipper needs to be connected via the USB-C cable. Next, we'll choose GPIO, and then we'll choose Air Mouse. In some custom firmwares, the video game module tool is also under GPIO. Let's click on Games, and then we'll select Install for Air Arkanoid. In the future, I hope to have Air Labyrinth in the store as well. Next, we have the Air Mouse. So we'll go down to GPIO and then Air Mouse. And then you can do Bluetooth if you've turned that on. Or you can do USB Remote. Some people have reported that pointing the IR sensor at the TV when you launch the app uh, helps with calibration as well. Next, we have Air Arkanoid. So we'll go into Apps and then down into Games and then Rotate Heart Controller and Air Arkanoid. Uh, if you go to Settings in here, you'll be able to see the orientation of your device and you'll be able to see if it's drifting or anything like that. Um, if it is drifting, I found just exit the app, unplug and plug in the controller again. In this next demo, we've plugged our video game module into our USB port. It showed up as COM18. So we're going to go ahead and use PUTTY to connect to 
COM18, press enter. We can type in help. And this is the CLI running in the video game module. Uh, CLI stands for command line interface. We can do exclamation mark to get the device info and find out which build is running on our video game module. We can run IMU test to see the output of the gyro and the accelerometer. In a future video, we'll be extending this CLI to have more commands, such as accessing the analog to digital converter. We'll run the GPIO command without any parameters, and you can see the different parameters it takes. Next, we'll use the GPIO list so that we can see which pins are dangerous and which pins are safe to use. And if you want to use a dangerous, you have to use GPIO, I know what I'm doing, um, but that may brick your device if you don't know what you're doing. I've hooked up an LED and a resistor to pin 22. When we set the value to zero, the light is off. And when we set the value to one, the light turns on. Unlike the flippers GPIO pins, there's no 51 ohm internal resistor. So make sure you add an external resistor. Next, we'll do GPIO input on pin 23. We have a 20K resistor going between ground and pin 23. I'll change that to 30K. And now you see we're reading a value of one. And when we drop it down to 20K, we're back to zero. This next demo also just uses the Raspberry Pi that's inside of our video game module. So we'll go ahead and install this app on our phone. Download the Pico UF2. Open up QFlipper, go into SD card, and you can just right click and do new folder for VGM. I already have a VGM folder that I'm going to be using. We'll open our downloads folder, and then in QFlipper, we'll just drag that file into the folder that we created earlier. The name of the folder doesn't matter. It's just making a place to go find it later. So in apps, then we'll go down to tools and then video game module tool. And this time we're gonna do install firmware from file. Go to that folder you created and you should be able to find that firmware file. And then just click install. This is the actual speed of installing. Um, it's really, these are pretty small firmwares and this is pretty quick. And with this new firmware, the HDMI out is now disabled. So run the app on your Android phone, plug in a USB-C to USB-C cable, say OK to allow the access. I have a signal generator connected between ground and pin 26. If you have two channels, you would also use ground and pin 27. You can see that my frequency is 13370 hertz. So about 13.4 kilohertz. Also, your voltages should be between zero and 3.3 volts for best results. Um, if you have stuff outside of that range, you should be working on changing it. And you can see here, our frequency is showing up at 13.4, so that's perfect. So a nice little um, oscilloscope that you can use from your Raspberry Pi in your video game module. Don't forget to flash the firmware back to official when you're done. Thanks again for watching this video game module introduction. In next week's video, we're gonna learn how to make a custom build environment for our firmware and how to make modifications to that firmware so we can do things like change the background color on the HDMI output. Please like and subscribe and leave a comment about what you'd like to see with the video game module.